Hello, everyone. I'm Diane from the Blackstone Public Library located in Blackstone, Massachusetts. I'd like to welcome you all to this Zoom presentation as part of the Blackstone Public Library's Financial Literacy for All Ages, a Formula for Success grant. This program, Couponing 101, is brought to you with federal funds provided by the Institute of Museum and Library Services and administered by the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners. Next, please let me introduce our presenter, professional crafter and couponing queen, Anna Mendez, owner of AfonsoWay.com. Anna is a patron favorite at the library, showcasing her skills with hands-on crafts and, of course, showcasing her extensive knowledge of pinching pennies with couponing. Now, without further ado, let me hand the program over to Anna for her presentation. Anna, take it away. I shop at multiple stores weekly for my groceries. Now with this pandemic, things are a little different. Um, and I know a lot of stores, um, especially BJ's, aren't accepting paper coupons. So that makes it a little difficult and not having items in stock and not being sales. But prior to this and after this pandemic, um, you'll be able to use these skills, but you are still able to, even now during this pandemic, save because most stores have like the rewards card that you can automatically add the coupons onto the card. So you don't have to bring anything in, paper coupons, you don't have to clip anything. You just either entering your phone number or um, they're scanning your reward card and all the coupons are there so you still have the savings. Um, where do you find coupons? Coupons can be found in so many places. You know, the old traditional ways of newspaper magazines, you can still find them there. But online, there's, you know, coupons.com is the main source of coupons. But there's other sites that also have coupons. There's bloggers that have uh, coupons on their sites. So looking for coupons and finding coupons, I mean, there's so many places for them. So um, you don't need to take any notes. I want to tell, tell everyone, just sit back, relax. There's a lot of information. So I'll try not to get you overwhelmed with all the information and tips that I have, because I could be talking about this for hours on end. Um, but if you go onto my site, and I hope everyone can see the screen on my site, afonsaway.com, if you go to the right-hand corner, there's a section that says blog, and then you'll see couponing. And in the couponing is all the information that, that I'm providing for you. And you can read it and absorb it on your own time. So that way you don't have to take any notes. You don't have to, you know, it's all about like, you know, where to find coupons and how to get organized and storing your coupons. So if just scrolling through on my site, on my blog, there's like tons of uh, information on what you need to do and how to organize yourself and where to find coupons and everything else like that. Um, this is different. This is my first virtual class. So thank you for uh, bearing with me. Usually, you know, I'm in the classroom and, you know, we can get more interactive, but um, I'm grateful that we're able to do this virtually. So um, just like with anything else, there's some rules with couponing. I mean, and understanding the different stores coupon policy is um, is the key. Um, and sometimes coupons policies change yearly, other times they change them more often. So it's always good to be familiar with your store's um, coupon policy. And even I even suggest printing it out if it's a store that you shop at all the time. Uh, for example, BJ's, uh, sometimes the cashiers are, are new or they're, they don't understand all of the um, coupon policies, they'll say, oh, you can't use a BJ's coupon and a manufacturer's coupon. And then if you have the coupon policy with you and, it's a, and it shows them, yes, you can use a manufacturer's coupon as well as a BJ's coupon on this you know, package of pasta sauce or toothpaste or whatever it may be. Um, so things like that, and you know, knowledge is power. So if you have that, it makes it easier when you get questioned like, oh, you know, you can't do this. And it's like, oh, well, according to this policy, I can. Um, so that's always good to have. Uh, another thing, when you go shopping and items are out of stock. Um, lately, that's almost always the case um, with items being out of stock and they're on sale and you happen to have coupons for the items and you're all excited, be sure to get a rain check. It just takes a couple extra minutes, but make sure you get a rain check for that, for that sale item. 
And also, if your coupon that you have to match with the sale item is about to expire or is expiring that day or it'll be expiring soon, but you're not sure if the item will be back in time, have the customer service manager or the store manager initial it so that way and staple it to your rain check. So that way, when it does come in, you will be able to use the rain check as well as the coupon to maximize your savings. So um, other things, organizing coupons. Um, you most people start off small. I started off with a you know, dollar store, a paper accordion kind of like organizer. I started off with one, then I needed to have two because I'd have my food items and coupons in one and my non-food items in another. And then um, over the years, I've gone to a binder. This is one of the, like, you know, the kids, uh, five-star trapper keeper kind of uh, binders. And in this, I have all my coupons organized. I have them um, sorted into these sheets. Now, these, these dividers you can find at Staples, you can find online. And so basically I just organize and put all my coupons. I'll put like, for me, I put my food and drink, my drinks in first, then I put my cereals and breads and meats. So you can organize it any way you feel comfortable with. Other people, um, store their coupons in like a little plastic um, storage box that's easy to carry. For me, I enjoy bringing this and I bring this everywhere that um, accepts coupons, I bring this. Like for example, Aldi doesn't accept coupons so I don't bring my binder with me. But otherwise, Target, Stop and Shop, grocery stores, Walmart, all those stores, I bring my binder with me. Even if I'm not planning on buying something, I bring it with me because I may come across a clearance item that I have a coupon and it might be something I need or something that doesn't cost me very much and that I can donate. That's the other thing I do. I do lots of donations, not just food donations, but um, health and beauty products um, to shelters. So I do that at least um, a couple of times a year. And, you know, because some people think like, oh, they need food. Yes, they need food, but they need other things other than food. They, you know, how about thinking about makeup or hair products, shampoo, toiletries, those kind of things. Sometimes after a coupon, after a clearance sale, you match up the coupon and it's only, you know, a few cents, less than a dollar. I'll grab those things. If it's something I don't personally use, I put them in like a tote. When I have my tote full, I donate it. Um, and, and they're just, people are just so appreciative of that. They really, really enjoy um, getting things and that people think of them in that way. Um, so sometimes people say, oh, I'm not going to get that even though it's free. It's, you know, why am I going to get that? I'm not, it's not something I use. Well, think about it. Even sometimes at the grocery stores at Stop and Shop, Shaw's, Hannaford, they have a rewards program. You know, it's free. It's like their rewards card. So you get the sale prices, um, job lot, the same thing. And sometimes uh, they'll have a promotion where it's like, oh, this week, you know, no purchase necessary. You can get a um, free package uh, of cat food or a free can of cat food or a free package of dog food. And and you say, well, I don't have a pet, but you, but you can get it and donate to an animal shelter. They would be more than happy to take that. Um, so that's something that, that I, I like to do. Another thing when I'm um, shopping is uh, if I see something on sale and I have coupons and it's a great deal, uh, I'll stock up, but I won't clear the shelf um, because there's other people that need items as well. And you know, I'll get as much as I need, but I make sure there's enough left over for other people. Um, and that's another thing called stockpiling. And stockpiling is when you get enough of that item to hold you over until the next sales cycle. So for example, something that doesn't expire, toilet paper, paper towels, um, those kind of items, tissues. If it's a, once you get used to seeing the cycle, the store cycle, you'll notice, oh, this brand of toilet paper or just toilet paper in general is on sale every three weeks or every four weeks. So I know when it's at the lowest price, that is when I'm gonna stock up to hold me long enough till the next sale comes 
comes about. And of course, stockpiling is great, but as long as you have this, the space for it, the storage. So make sure when you're doing all this, and again, all this information is on, this, is on my blog here. Um, you can go through it one by one and, uh, and digest it. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to me. Um, I even have some receipts here of items that because people are like, oh, how can I get free food? Like for example, at Jabla, they have a section in their stores of food items that if you spend $10 or more of those items, you get that money back in a gift card. So essentially you're getting free food. Now, is it something that you may use or you might like, or is the expiration date coming up soon? Yes and no, you don't know. It's, it depends on from store to store. But think about considering if you're going to job lot to pick up you know, some trash bags or, or something else, stopping by that section and purchasing some to donate to a food shelter. Because essentially, it's really not gonna cost you anything, just maybe the tax, um, because you do get that amount back in the gift card. Um, other things to consider, stockpiling. I mean, there's so much information. Going back to um, clipping and non-clipping coupons, I do both. I have the um, Sunday newspaper inserts that I go through and I clip the products that I use all the time and I organize them in my binder. And then there are the coupons that are online that I print as well from coupons.com. And I suggest doing it at the beginning of the month and then checking back again at the end of the month. Because at the beginning of the month is when whole new set of coupons go on. And at the end of the month, they start putting the new ones for the future month. So uh, sometimes you can catch um, some coupons before because they do have a limited amount of each coupon printable. So once they've reached that limit, it's not available. So uh, if you wanna you know, remember that, that'd be good for as far as printable coupons. And then as far as uh, online coupons, I do that as well. I attach my online coupons to my Hannaford rewards, my Shaw's rewards, my stop and shop rewards. I mean, all the places, even Target, my Target circle. Um, I attach all those coupons um, just by logging into the site and doing the rewards and just you know, sometimes it's by your phone number. Sometimes it's by your actual uh, membership card. The same thing with CVS and Walgreens. You know, you just type in the, your rewards card number and then it brings up all the available coupons and you just select them. And then all you do is when you go to the store, you just show your card and purchase the items and it automatically deducts the coupons. Now, if there's um, people that say, oh, you know, I, I would love to be able to do all that, but it sounds like a lot of work. Well, it is. To do couponing the way I do couponing, to provide the savings um, that I have, it does, take, um, it does take a few hours to several hours a week, depending on what I'm doing. I mean, if it's a, a big week of lots of coupon inserts, just the clipping and organizing and then taking out the old coupons, because back in the day, the coupons used to have expiration dates Sometimes it would be a year or several months. Now, if anyone, if any of you have noticed, the coupon dates, uh, the expiration dates are sometimes you have a week or at max two weeks, which by the time you get to go use it, it's already expired. So it's one of those things. But what I say is the more you put into it, the more savings you get. So speaking of savings, I wanted to let you know uh, what my savings were for last year, for 2019. And now this doesn't include all the stores. This includes the stores that actually show your savings at the end of the year on your receipt. Uh, so I, my goal is to always save an average of 50% to at between 50 and 75%. There are times that I've saved as much as 90% off my grocery bill just by matching sales with coupons and clearance items with coupons and using my rewards from the stores, um, it really does add up. So last year in 2019, I saved $8,346.99. Wow, yeah, <laughs> almost $9,000 that I saved. The majority of it, I wanna say it was from um, Stop and Shop and Shaw's and Hannaford, uh, 
and Whole Foods, even Whole Foods. I know some people say, oh, you know, um, the coupons that I see or that I come across are for, you know, processed foods or non-organic foods. And you're absolutely right. Majority of coupons that are out there um, as far as printable or as far as, you know, in the coupon inserts in the newspapers are for the processed non-organic uh, foods. But there are coupons for organics. I have and how do, how do I come across them? Well, for example, if you're someone who has allergies or has food restrictions or you just want to eat organic, there are many sites. And again, on my blog, you will see, I have um, listed, you know, where it says, where do I find coupons? There are some companies, you know, Kashi. Um, there's um, lettuce companies, there's like, all kinds of companies, organic companies, vans that offer coupons on their site. So if you sign up for their emails, they'll send you a coupon and sometimes even a free item. So that's something to always, and if you don't, if you don't think you've ever seen it online, the company or know how to reach the company, look at your product. I, on the back of your box or the package, there should be a website or how to contact the company. And companies love to hear that you love their item. They love to hear that you buy it all the time. And so in turn, for that positive feedback from them and, and asking them for coupons or discounts, um, sometimes they reward you by mailing or by sending you an email with coupons. So that's something to keep in mind. So yes, there are ways to save money on organics. Um, by doing that, by actually contacting the company or signing up for the company's um, website for their emails, they send you coupons. All right, so uh, talked about rain checks and stockpiling, organizing your coupons. So some of you or all of you may be tech savvy and say, oh, you know, I have my phone all the time and I don't want to have to make lists or do any of those kind of things. And, you know, there are so many uh, apps and most of them are free. And again, this is on my blog. Um, you'll see a listing of all the um, places that have, um, that have apps that show you um, what they do. Like, for example, um, you probably heard of, heard of Checkout 51. That's like a cashback app that you buy the, few, the items that they feature and you get rewarded. Ibotta.com, you know, that's another cashback app. After you shop, you take a photo of the receipt and they reward you, you know, with sometimes with gift cards or with items. Um, there's price check by Amazon. You scan the item's barcode or you take a picture and you see if Amazon has it for a lower price. And sometimes that is like a big savings. You're at a store, you see an item that you like, oh, this is a good deal. Let me just check in, you know, with this price check by Amazon. You scan the barcode and you find out that Amazon has it, you know, for a few bucks cheaper. You know, right there's a little bit of savings. Is it worth it? You know, that way you can make um, a decision. Uh, there's so many, um, there's sites that you can use. Uh, Grocery IQ. It makes your shopping list, it alerts you to coupons that are, are available for the items that you want. You can print items or you can add them to your grocery cart. So again, there's like a huge amount of apps and um, I have listing of uh, what apps and what, what they do for you. So take a look and see, maybe there's some that you'd like to try or some, some that you've already tried and others that you want to try um, and just do what feels comfortable. You know, some people are very comfortable with just doing all kinds of apps and others are uh, less comfortable. Bottom line is you do what's best for you and what fits your schedule. The same thing with couponing. If you like to clip coupons and get organized, start small. Start with, you know, just a few items that you buy all the time, tracking the sales at a particular store, having your coupons with you, and then go from there. It's something that just, you know, it takes time to learn. And then every time you think you, you know what the process is or the coupon policy is for store, they, they change it on you. Um, but don't get dismayed. Um, you really can do lots of savings. And even if you only save a few bucks every month, it does add up at the end of the year. Um, 
let's see, the other thing, coupons. So what's the difference between some coupons? Some coupons will say um, manufacturer's coupon and some will say store coupon. So for example, like this is a free um, magazine that they have at Stop and Shop. This happens to be the June edition and they have these at customer service or at the registers. So be sure to ask um, for them. And inside you'll find articles on um, food, new food items that are coming, all about tomatoes, like seasonal products. They offer um, several uh, recipes, but they also have coupons. So they also have free coupons. So I've earmarked some pages so I could show you and talk to you about. So like, for example, this one is save a dollar on two Cabot slice packages. Now this says manufacturer's coupon. Down here it says redeem at Stop and Shop, but this is a manufacturer's coupon. So you could possibly use this at Hannaford or Shaw's because it's a manufacturer's. It's not saying you only can redeem it at Stop and Shop. Stop and Shop would like you to redeem it there, but you don't have to just use it there. Then over here, it's just another thing about getting familiar with what the coupons um, say. For example, this one says digital coupon. So this one is something that you could add to your rewards card or you could click. So let's see what else. More coupons in here. This one. This one is another coupon that's in here. It's Dave's Killer Item. So. Um, if you happen to like that brand, it's a dollar off Dave's Killer Bread item, and the expiration date isn't until the end of July. So, and it says manufacturer's coupon. Now, this says do not duplicate. So, what that means is don't go and make a copy, you know. Um, some people um, think like, oh, I'll just, you know, no, you can clip it out of the um, Stop and Shop magazine, and when they say, uh, limit one coupon per transaction. That means one coupon per order. So if you wanted to buy two bottles of shampoo, but the coupon said um, limit of one coupon per transaction, you would have to do two separate orders in order to use those coupons. You would use one coupon for the first order, then do a separate order for the other one to use the coupon. Other times the coupons may say um, one coupon per item. So you can use more coupons if you have more items. So if you're buying five boxes of toothpaste and the coupon says one coupon per item, you could use all five. Now bear in mind that also sometimes on um, the coupons in the fine print, it says limit of two of the exact same coupon or limit of four of the exact same coupon. So those are the things that you need to keep in mind and just kind of get used to reading the coupons and making sure you understand it so that way you maximize your savings. Another thing, if you're not big into like, oh, I keep forgetting my coupons and uh, you know this kind of stuff, you can still save money. And how you do that is by buying items that are in the, sales weekly flyers that are buy one, get one free, because essentially those are 50%. So right there, you are saving 50%. So like for example, this week at, um, at Walgreens, Dixie plates are buy one, get one free. So right there, you're saving 50% off. There is a coupon on Walgreens um, site that you can add to your membership card for 75 cents off of two packages. So that's additional savings. But let's say you didn't know about that and you just went in and you got the Dixie plates. Right there, you should be proud of yourself because you're saving 50% on something, paper plates that don't have an expiration. Of course, as long as you have the room to store them. Um, but it's something that gets used up a lot, especially now during the summertime. Um, so again, like, or even if uh, you say, oh, it's just me by myself and I, I see the sale, buy one, get one free on pasta sauce, but really one jar of pasta sauce is, is gonna be enough. What about a friend and neighbor? Maybe you go on shopping trips together and take advantage of the buy one, get one free sale. And that way you kind of split the, the cost and you both each get one and you both save 
you know, the same thing with BJ's. Some people don't shop at BJ's because the packages are too big or they're not going to use them. You know, if you split it up with, a, you know, a few friends or family members, um, then the savings can be spread to all of you. Um, let's see what else. Um, also, another thing, if you like the idea of saving money and couponing, but you feel like it's, you know, it could be overwhelming or, you know, you just don't have the time to uh, shop all the flyers and match the coupons to the flyers, you don't have to. There are um, people, there are sites, blogs, where they do the work for you. You know, there's some that are just all about Target. This is how you get the best deals in Target. These are the sale items that you match with coupons. Others are all about Walmart. Others are about Walgreens. And all this information is all on um, online, on the internet. You can find, there's so many um, companies that, that do things like that for you. You know, there's, um, some of you may have heard of like Honey. Like Honey is uh, a program that when you're doing online shopping, it will alert you that, that um, here's a, an extra savings. You know what I mean? There's so many free things that you could use to get savings. You know, Retail Me Not is another one for online shopping as well as Honey. Um, but as far as, um, you know, there's couponpal.com and couponnetwork.com. And then, you know, there's so many, um, Places even on Pinterest. If you go on Pinterest and you look up um, saving money with coupons, there's like so much information out there. And again, all of this stuff that I'm talking about is on my blog. Um, I just didn't want to overwhelm you by going through all of it with you. I just kind of wanted to give like a high level, and then we're going to get to questions, and then I'll be able to answer your individual questions. Um, also, another thing, um, I mentioned before about sales cycles. So um, you'll notice some grocery stores, if you ever compare uh, more than one grocery store weekly to the other, you'll start to notice that they have some of the same exact items on sale that week. An example, Tide laundry detergent is one that you'll see, you know, once Stop and Shop has it, Shaw's has it, or Cottonelle toilet paper, or, you know, the, you'll start seeing all these like products that show up all the time that and then when you compare the sales you say okay well stop and shop is cheaper by a dollar but i don't have anything else to buy at stop and shop so why waste a trip shaw's is a dollar more expensive but i'm going to save money on all these other groceries so those are the kind of conversations and things that um you think about but they do stores will have their sales cycles and then also on my blog here i also have um, a seasonal sales cycle by month. When is the best time to buy things? So for example, we're in June. So June is the best month in regards to sales for ice cream. So if you have the room in your freezer, you have an extra freezer, June is the month to stock up on the sale uh, when ice cream is on sale because it is like whole month long of sales on all the same thing with ketchup and mustard and mayonnaise and you know all the condiments for grilling uh, milk butter cheese and eggs and yogurt as well as well as watermelon and berries those are the things that if you can have the room um, and you like to you can buy in bulk and freeze like for example I will go blueberry picking and I'll buy tons and tons of blueberries and I will freeze the majority of them. I will freeze them in the freezer. Um, I lay them flat in a, um, just a cookie sheet pan until they're frozen. And then it makes it easier to put them in Ziploc bags. And then throughout the year, I use those blueberries to make blueberry muffins or desserts or, or anything, just food in general. But I have a savings because I had bought them um, at their peak season when they're a better deal. So then upcoming July, I mean, you've got your barbecue sauce and your soda and your steaks and burgers and all that stuff is also the time. And corn, that's the time to go buy those items. So knowing what items are on sale by month, when that's their key time to go on sale, that's when you should plan on stocking up on those items. All right, let's see. I think I've given you quite a bit of information. Some other things to um, think about that some of you may not know. 
Um, there are some stores that give you a discount if you bring your own reusable tote bags. Um, for example, Whole Foods and Target, they'll give you um, five cents off for each bag that you bring in. So for your groceries. So right there, it's like oh, people, oh, it's only five cents. Well, if you have 10 bags of, of food, that's 50 cents. 50 cents doesn't seem like a lot, but add it up you know, month, every week, monthly, at the end of the year, that's still some savings. Um, so always a good thing. So how do you remember so you don't forget? Oh, you know, I have the reusable tote bags and then I always forget. I have coupons, but I always forget them. How do I remember to bring them with me? And uh, what I say is always keep reusable totes in your vehicle as well as whatever coupon system you're gonna use, be it an envelope that you separate by store, be it a binder that has all your categories in it, or an accordion file, whatever it is that you use for, for coupons, you know, have it in your car. Because there are times that sometimes, you know, you're just running in for one thing, and right next to the thing you're buying, you see something that you actually use, a product that you use or, um, or that you will be using and it's on clearance and you say, oh, wait a minute, I have a coupon for that. So that's gonna be even less money. I'll run out to my car and get my binder if I forget it. You know, so having it there um, is, is, is good because you have additional savings. Um, another thing that I'd like to mention is always check your receipt. As you're leaving the store, or even if you're in the parking lot and you're in your car, just take a quick glance at your receipt and make sure that um, everything is correct, that the prices rang in correctly, because sometimes, you know, you do your best to try to make sure as things are being rung up to pay attention, but sometimes you're distracted by the children or you're, you know, putting things on the, on the, um, at the register and you know they're going faster than than you can see um just make sure because sometimes it's a small amount that's a difference but it'll make a big difference if you're overcharged so make sure you catch that and go right away go back into customer service and get your money back because you're more apt to do that if you're in the parking lot or if you're still in the store than if you go home because then it's like oh is it worth me driving back there for 50 cents so um that's something to do and always, again, get rain checks because you went there for the sale, the item wasn't there, you know, you should be able to get that sale item. Um, so make sure you do that. I think right now I'll probably open it up to questions. So if anybody has any questions for me, uh, we'll go through it. So go ahead and... Uh... Hey everybody, at this point, um, if you do have a question, so take a look at your participants window and raise your hand and then I can unmute you if you're uh, willing to speak. And if you would like to have me to read the question for you, feel free to type it into the chat box and I'll read it out loud for you. So at this point, we're taking questions. I know there was a lot of information and so any questions? So let's see, I don't see any questions. I don't see any raised hands. Anna, how can they get in touch with you if it turns that they do have a question after the fact? Absolutely. So if they go on my site, afonsoway.com and um, go under blog, and that's where I have like all the information that I talked about and more depth information. I just didn't want to overwhelm everyone. Um, but you go through it and you have a question. Oh, you know, I shop at this store and um, I don't know where to find the coupons or I don't know this or that. Just there's... Um, there's a, at the bottom of my screen at on my site, it says, have a question and just send me a question. I'll answer you. Um, our and, next one says, can you please say your website again, slowly? They absolutely. didn't catch the full thing. Okay. It does everyone, can everyone see the screen that I shared? Okay. Yeah. It's afonsoway.com. So it's A is an apple, F is in Frank, O is in orange, N is in Nancy, S is in Sam, O is an orange way, W A Y dot com. All right, I hope that um, got your question answered. I see a raised hand. Let me unmute. Okay. It looks like I'm going to be talking to Lise. Hold on, Lise. Let me unmute you. Lise, are you there? I am. Hi, Lise. Great. Welcome. It was, 
it was difficult to get on. The raise hand button wasn't working well, but I finally oh, got sorry. on. Oh, sorry to hear that. Well, well I'm I, glad we got that worked out. No, yeah, just so that you know. Um, you had mentioned the Honey site when you do online shopping. Yes. So I use Rakuten. What other ones do you suggest? There are so many. I personally love the Honey one, um, but there really are so many. It's it's one of those things that you just, uh, if you do like a quick search for um, online savings apps, it'll bring okay. up a bunch of them and it's whatever you feel more comfortable with and what works for you. Okay. All right. Yeah, it, there's what, just so much information out there, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I have a couple other questions I wrote Absolutely. down. One of them was like at Stop and Shop if, and other places, if they rang, if an item rang up wrong, they mm -hmm. used to give you back a certain amount of money. Do stores still do that? Okay, great question. So in my experience has been that most stores do not. What they do is they'll ring it up for the correct amount. So they'll so if, if something rang up wrong and you didn't catch it until after you paid, you go to customer service, they'll give you the difference. So they'll give you for that. Okay. In Massachusetts though, that's in Rhode Island, but in Massachusetts, there's a law and you'll see if you ever go to the registers, Hannaford, um, you know, all the grocery stores, there's a sign that says there's a law that if an item rings up, if a grocery yep. item rings up incorrectly, they are to give it, they give you the first item free. So let's say, for example, you bought two boxes of cereal, the tag on the shelf said they were $250, but they rang up for $4.99. You, yep. you know, bring it up to their attention. They are to give you that first box free, and the second one would ring up, they would mark it at $250. And do you so, usually have to go to customer service to do that, or does the cashier know to do that? The cashier, and sometimes there's new cashiers or cashiers that aren't familiar, and I just ask them, oh, come around the register. Right here is the sign. So if you look at the register, it's like right below where you pay, there'll be a yes. sign there that yeah. says, okay. you know, the law. It says something about uh, if the item is on sale for more than $10, then they'll reduce it to 10 But if an item is less than $10, yeah. they should be giving you the first item free. Okay. Now, I've also experienced that Whole Foods, Whole Foods, if an item rings up incorrectly, you get it free. Oh, okay. But again, it would be just that one item. It's happened to me before where I've bought shampoo, you know, and I'm like, wait a minute, that rang up incorrectly. They go and check it. You know, they go on the shelf and they check and they said it's wrong. Okay, well, I get that item free because that was their error. But again, not all stores do that. And it may change depending on who the managers are, but that has been my experience. So it's okay. always good to be informed and knowledgeable. But in Massachusetts, there is a law that if grocery items ring up incorrectly, they are to um, give you the first item free or a penny. Like for example, BJ's, the first item would be a penny. And then after that, if you had more than one of that item, it would be the sale price. But that was last year at BJ's. And I want to say earlier this year, um, I had, I think it was like a package of deli meat. It rang up incorrectly. And they said, oh no, we're not doing that anymore. Um, we'll just give it to you for the sale price. And it's like, okay. But so again, it's one of those things like, and they'll have it. Each store will have it on there. If you go on their site, they'll have it on for their coupon policy. So again, it's always good to get familiar <clears throat> with that. But knowing that in Massachusetts, just look below the, you know, where you, the pin pad is to see that mm -hmm. sign where it says, you know, and then if they are not familiar with it, you know, bring it to their attention. Okay. Okay. And my final one, I've always wondered why there aren't a lot of coupons for 99 cents off something because then we could double that mm -hmm. whereas a dollar coupon you can't double that is correct what, what, so, do you why don't they do that <laughs> well I, because, because i know it's it's right. against yeah they're losing money that way exactly but. the most i have seen is 75 cents off that doubles Okay. And again, it, to know the difference between uh, a coupon that doubles and not doubles is the ones that do not double will say do not double on them. Yes, yes. So always keep that. that in mind. So for example, you know, you're comparing uh, 
a sale at two different places and, and you say, oh, this is um, 50 cents cheaper here, and then you have your coupon, but if your coupon doesn't double, that's not gonna be your biggest savings. So it's one of those kind of like games you yeah. gotta play that you gotta kind of check, but you have to, yes, de definitely check if it says do not double, then the other coupon that may be a dollar off of two is a better deal. You know what I mean? Okay. Yes, oh, I do, I do. I, I am a couponer to some extent and- Awesome. Ha yeah, have run across all those uh, scenarios and I was just, I was just curious. Curious, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and All right, Anna, thank you. Thing. Oh, you're welcome, Lisa, anytime. Thank you for joining. I hope that, you know, I've been informative and that those that um, are couponing, that they've got some, you know, new information and tips and uh, they're excited to use them. And those that are new to couponing, um, that you're excited to check it out. Thank you all so much for attending today's program. We want to remind you that this project was made possible in part by the Institute of Museum of Library Services and administered by the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners. With that, I'd like to say thank you to Anna for her presentation and thank you all for attending. Check out the Blackstone Public Library's calendar of events page for future Zoom programming. Be safe, be well, and we hope to see you again soon. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. Appreciate Thanks. It. Everyone take care. Take care.